and China's influence in the Americas. Let's go to Einar Tangen in Beijing, CGTN's current affairs commentator. So Einar, El Salvador, the latest country, which also happens to be in the Americas to establish ties with China. And we mentioned Panama last year and then the Dominican Republic. So what does this signal and what has changed in two years? Well, uh, a lot of change. I mean, Tai Young Wei is a, a non-acceptance of the uh, 1992 accord was just the one major part reason that this has been happening. Uh, before that, China had been holding off and not uh, trying to push this issue as a way of, of softening relations. But now it's quite clear that these countries, Panama, El Salvador, they want to be more aligned with China, uh, mainland China and they don't see the, the value of the Taiwanese relationship. Of course, this is a, sings, you know, a, a good opportunity for Trump to sing, uh, ring the alarm bells about China and its expansion. Uh, I don't know that it has that much effect, especially when he has other things on his plate. Right. It, it kind of came out of nowhere. Five countries severed ties with Taiwan in the past two years, as we mentioned. And we know that the Taiwan leader vi recently visited the region, uh, Belize and Paraguay, uh, as of late to shore up support. What is happening there behind the scenes? Well, I, I don't think there's any great mystery. I mean, uh, South America has been increasingly looking uh, eastward towards China. It's been largely ignored by the U.S. I, I, th I think this, uh, the wall issue, uh, the comments by uh, <clears throat> President Trump about Mexico, about South Americans, has made it uh, much more popular. Plus, there's just the overwhelming economic reasons. I mean, when you start looking at this uh, trade war that's going on now, what it's doing is it's changing the supply lines uh, across the road. Those who did business in the United States are looking other places. Those who do business with China are looking other places. And I think there's an opportunity, and uh, many of these countries see that, and that's where they're uh, hopping on board. Yeah, we know that Mexico right now is still uh, negotiating with the United States when it comes to NAFTA, so there is a problem there with these two neighbors. Still a handful of countries, though, that have ties with Taiwan. Do you think we could see more follow suit and any word on who could be next? Well, it's, uh, there are a host of countries who are considering it. Uh, obviously, Taiwan is uh, uh, fighting back very hard. Uh, they're, they're trying to retain what's left. But we're down to such a few number of countries, it's uh, almost negligible. I can see them coming uh, on board simply because of the trade uh, ties. I mean, the Belt and Road Initiative, uh, all of these things point towards being more global, especially as the U.S. retreats uh, economically uh, from the stage. And uh, very quickly, Einar, we know that the G20 will be held in Argentina later this year in November, expecting to see a big showing there. Um, just give us an overview about how the region, how the Americas are looking to China. You mentioned the trade issue, but there's been a relationship between China and several of these countries for a long, long time, and leaders uh, from China have made regular visits there. Yeah, it's, it's really about uh, uh, economics. Uh, you start looking at BRICS, you start looking at the AIIB, um, you know, the ABCs have all joined. Uh, the Belt and Road Initiatives now going towards uh, South America, which is unusual. This is really the first international. This is a huge departure from the traditional Silk Road that went from uh, Asia to uh, Europe. So, you know, it, it's just a realignment of the existing economic orders, especially in view of the kind of politics that is being played uh, in Washington. I, I think people are, have, may have concerns about China, but in the end, uh, they see opportunities there, and they see a model that's been working uh, much more effectively than what, what uh, Washington, the Washington consensus has to offer. All right. Always great to hear your take. Einar Tangen in Beijing. Thank you.